There's a battle brewing in the TV world. It's been going on for a few years. It's about to blow up this year. Hisense versus TCL. Up next. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Brian. This is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for watching. Great rivalries, great battles in the tech world are legendary. Nintendo versus Sega. Xbox versus Sony, Sony versus Samsung, LG jumping in that fray, the top three fighting it out. But there is a battle that's been going on the last number of years with TCL and Hisense dominating the value to mid tier in TVs. Last year, both of them made massive jumps. This year, from what we both, FOMO and I, who I'll be interviewing for this discussion, saw at CES, to me, is the next great rivalry that threatens to consume and overtake everything. All right, guys, I'm Brian. This is Tech Therapy. I'm here with my partner in crime, Stop the FOMO. FOMO, how are you today, bro? I am doing great. Weather's good. Rain is gone. I'm ready. Excellent. Excellent. Today's topic is an ongoing or brewing TV rivalry. To me, it's a big deal and it's a rivalry that not many are talking about, but the industry is actually steering in a direction that these two manufacturers are headed in. We spent time with both of them at CES. I'm talking about Hisense versus TCL. Both of them have jumped into the market of a very large mini leds bright mini leds many zones the industry is actually trending that way fomo and they've been known primarily for many years as value brands and people have not really looked at them seriously until the last few years which i know you were part of bringing that uh to our platform with the, the uh-huh. u8h and uh, i wanted to bring you on simply because i think we got to start the party in terms of talking about these yes. two going head to head and that they one of them is going to knock off somebody in the top three and they're not just value brands now i think they shedded that last year with uh, their processing their picture quality and their sizes it looks like they're looking to do that again this year i was very impressed with them at ces both of them give me some of your thoughts on where you think they're headed or is this a rivalry am i imagining it we'll start with what you said top three knocking someone off uh someone off and so they both have Hisense and TCL are fast growing, not just in America, but in other parts of the world, China. And TCL, I believe, is like number three in the USA in terms of volume. I mean, yeah. I think they've knocked someone else already, right? Sales-wise, like, definitely. Sales-wise, right. So yes, we do know TCL and Hisense both sell the, the budget, the value branded TVs. What is shocking is what we're talking about today is not just that they're selling a lot of TVs. I mean, if Fire TV sold a lot. We wouldn't even be talking. It's Mm -hmm. that they're going premium. They are hitting on all four cylinders in every part that they can. Image quality, technology, gaming. I mean, if it's a buzzword, they're going to try to incorporate it. They got Dolby Vision. They got HDR 10 Plus, right? They're trying a little bit of everything, and they're moving concurrently. Right now, they're not the best. I know a lot of you guys are saying, oh, but those guys are budget. Is it really a budget TV anymore when like a 115 inch looks like it will be over $15,000? The 110 inch from the UX from Hisense looks like it will be close to $10,000. I mean, these guys aren't taking no prisoners, man. <laughs> well, I well, I love last year. We'll start with Hisense. I love last year when we saw their booth. Shout out to Hisense and the whole team mm-hmm. that we um, worked with last year, this year. Same with TCL. Um, Hisense right away shocked me last year with their entire lineup being mini LED. To me, that yeah. was a you know, big jump with the, the U6K, the U7K, and U8K. It kind of was a statement that while everyone else is doing direct LEDs, edge-lit LEDs, mm-hmm. um, algorithm like the X90L, you had them go mini LED right from jump, even at their very low price point. And they even created this almost a pyramid where, hey, if you don't like this one's too expensive, you can get a larger version of our U7K and vice versa. Then at the end of the year, we saw the UAK at 100 inches, a master stroke, um, and at a very affordable price. Before we go into the large TVs, then they did their UX, which I was one of the few, and so were you, to actually cover the UX last year. And it was kind of looked at oddly as being too expensive. Even though it was an 85 inch TV with great sound, very bright, very vibrant, 
it came out and people were like, well, they have a lot of nerve charging that. Until I got my hands on it and put it against the X95 at the yes. shootout and the also, uh -huh. and I was shocked that I preferred it in a lot of cases. Vibrant, it was beautiful, the build quality, sound quality. But um, seeing them and TCL both approach this, not only as we've talked about it, shedding the value, but the image quality and the build quality is undeniable. And then now seeing TCL, which last year had the amazing QM8, the Q7, which I know you really liked, the Q7 M8 or the Q7 or M7 this year. Q, QM7. Yeah. QM7 will be mini LED. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of leapfrogging each other, but we all win when they go after each other. And their booths were side by side, which you know we'll joke about right now because I think it's it's great to share what we see. But um, we saw what I love about them is the Moxie and the Bravado. Each one of them had their entire lineups there versus mm -hmm. the vagueness of our other favorites that are like, hey, here's a little peek or hey, what's yeah. the part number? I don't know. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about what you saw, uh, what impressed you this year and a little bit of that back and forth that we saw in the booth. So what impressed me this year is both TV brands really want to hit hard the premium buyer not they're not calling themselves okay for value blah 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 it's this is straight up performance at two thousand dollars at fifteen hundred we're the best right that impressed me because normally it's like at eight hundred dollars for under a thousand this is a great value they keep on pushing that price point up going after the flagship tvs that are four five thousand but they're not that far behind they're at two thousand right eighteen hundred and so that premium attack, they are no longer attacking the mainstream big three, Samsung, LG, Sony. Well, LG is no longer in the LCD game, but Sony and Samsung, they're going after each other because I think that's more of a challenge. We've already concluded that, for example, Samsung, the QN90C or the 95B or the 90B from last year or the year before, it felt like both TCL and Hisense already surpassed Samsung when it comes to pure deep blacks and specular highlights. It wasn't a challenge going after Samsung. Yes, Samsung has some advantages, right? Gaming, maybe the stability of Tizen, but the reality is HDR impact, it was Hisense versus TCL. And last year, QM8 versus U8K. And this year it is something we're gonna predict the QM8 again versus the UX or the U8L or U8N. Mm -hmm. And that rivalry is now not subtle. So at CES, they were right next to each other. And I was like, <laughs> it feels like they don't like each other much. And yeah. without sharing too many stories, at the end of the day, I concluded that, okay, this is the new LG versus Samsung. Hisense versus TCL is a thing in so many yeah. ways. I mean, yeah. they, they were not happy. So TCL was not happy that Hisense was right there nor was Hisense too happy that TCL was not was yeah. on the other side. TCL was blasting their NFL. Uh, they have this NFL special where you're, you know, hang out with the players and they blast that audio on our side. So you have the NFL player yelling and screaming, come on guys, let's do this. I had such a hard time recording my footage and trying to speak yeah. over that, that I had to maybe do a voiceover later. But on the other side, you know, TCL did not like the high sense was flashing their logo everywhere on their side. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you covered TCL, TCL would try to angle you so that the high sense logo was not in the video. So yep. both sides did not like having the other even be mentioned in the same breath because they want to win this this race yeah and by yeah. winning this race we win as consumers because they're pushing Absolutely. the envelope of performance incrementally and yeah. each year they get a little bit better a little bit better but where will they be in two three years well and i think they're almost there for almost simply because as we saw sony's angle with the 4000 net reference monitor mm -hmm. and obviously with very very affordable large tvs that we've seen our own communities in a lot in our last number of live streams that we've done on your channel, they have really dominated the topic, even if the topic wasn't about large TVs. I believe we did a QD OLED stream about the S95, and the majority of those questions were still about 100 inch S5s and S4s and a UAK and a U7. And so I think that really, and we talked about that maybe taking over projectors. 
But the fact that they're going to have, and I know TCL has this, 48 inch all the way up to 100 inch with like the S5. They have every size covered at every phase. So here's, here's your, your bargain, but your bargain one also has uh, great local dimming. Where before, if they had a large TV, the local dimming really suffered. So everything is pretty good to amazing. And then you have Hisense on the other side, where last year, all mini LED, now the UX is front and center with 10,000 nit 4K monster, mm -hmm. awesome audio. Then they had an AK model as well, mm -hmm. which I didn't see one on, TIS or on TCL side that wasn't a prototype in the corner from their display brand. Right. But I love the same attitude, different. And what's funny is they don't dislike each other. Oh, we can't share who they were, but a couple of the guys that know each other, it was like angry guys being like, turn your music down. <laughs> but I love that when we walked into the booth. And for those of you that haven't been at CES, a lot of, and it's probably, we should do a video called the truth of CES FOMO right. is a lot of it is for TVs. Anyway, it's not what you want to see. It's their concepts. Not so with Hisense and TCL. TCL was just naked. Anything they had was like, here's the best we have right here. And here's this one. Yeah. Here's that one. Then they had a great gaming setup. They both had great surround sound demos. I would say Hisense was really impressive. Yes, TCL was. had a, um, a different one. Uh, they had really cool projectors, at least on. So they had different things, FOMO. Uh, Hisense, I'd say, had better or more impressive projectors. Yes. They both had uh, surround sound rooms. And to put their TVs were the show, were the star of the show. The U8N, U7N were in the back, a little bit different than last year. But TCL let it all hang out with, I don't think they had a TV under 85 inches. I think they were all 85 and up to 100, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, they, they were showing off all their models in their larger sizes. They yeah. weren't, so they're, it felt like their space was larger too, because it wasn't just yeah, both of them. TVs, it was AR glasses, it was auto. Was it displays for cars? It was yeah. the smartphone. I mean, they had all this technology they wanted to show off as well. Hisense was very focused on home theater. So you had ultra short throw. They had different types yeah. of short throw, laser TVs, audio. But you can you get a sense that both sides really want to dominate and take over your home. Now, in the USA, it's mostly TVs and home theater. But yeah. in other parts of Asia, washing machines, kitchen utensils, kitchen equipment, yeah. right? Appliances. So these guys are serious. They, they have, they have the deep pockets. But conversely FOMO, let's say we talked about our, our first look at Samsung and they did have a ton of TVs there. Mm -hmm. And I know I wandered off the last day and I really went to go. So we, we had exclusive views to all the manufacturers that were there. Um, then I went to go see, maybe see if I can catch some footage of LG and they had the transparent OLED was their star. Nothing else that I saw there was the G4, the C4, the QNEDs. It was all the home stuff that you're talking about. Right. So I actually didn't shoot anything there. And then um, went over to Samsung, one TV. That was the AK900D. No QD OLEDs, no nothing. And then um, Sony had that sneak peek for us. But then what I mean about TCL and LG, usually they're very vague and quiet about when their TVs are coming out, which ones are coming to market. You and I walked right into both of them and it was here I am. Mm. And I love that. They were being proactive versus reactive, which they've been in the past. Now let's see when these things, now they weren't telling us exactly when it would launch, but they were beating their chests, which I loved, yeah. especially yeah. the UXs were all lined up um, and they were facing and they were both really focusing on processing this year. So mm -hmm. speak to me a little bit about, did you get that, uh, that thought from them as far as processing for both Hisense and TCL? So definitely high sense. I asked them about the processing and they said they work hard on it because they know, you know, they look at my polls, the answer or the question is, would you get a high sense? And the response is only if they improve their image processing. High sense knows that they know that they have the hardware, the brute force, the number of dimming zones, they have all the basics, but the software, that processing to get all that equipment pull together and take it to what Sony has done with their, I'd say, decades of experience with image yeah. processing, right? And so Hisense is playing catch up, but every year you just get 5% better. And this year they said, look, we saw the issues last year, because every year there's issues, nothing's perfect. This mm -hmm. year is still better yet. And that's all I wanted to hear that they continue to focus on that. TCL, although they mentioned, you know, well, if you ask some processing, sure it's improved, but 
TCL feel, it feels to me like they know their market. Their market is pop, bang. Like Brute the Force, yeah. last year, right? It was just yeah. so, the colors are saturated, deep blacks, great contrast. They don't care that much about, I say color accuracy out of the box. It was off. You can really calibrate it back in, but yep. they didn't care. They sold more TVs than they ever did last year, and they're going to run with it. Whereas Hisense is the one, it feels like Hisense is more like, I don't want to say they're more like Sony because Sony would be very offended, but Hisense out of the box is a little bit more accurate, a little bit yeah. more about shadow detail, which is very interesting because TCL is more like Samsung was, what, six years ago? Q9FN, yeah. QFN, right? Just impact saturation yeah. crush the blocks a little bit it's okay people love it and tcl says you know what that sells tvs why reinvent the wheel hyacinth wants to separate itself and be more like the affordable sony and i think that's yeah. the direction they're going again this year well and tcl funny you mentioned that they basically took the mantle that samsung dropped with the q9 fn and the q8 fn and they try and yeah. what's funny is samsung to me try to get more accurate which they have especially and the qd have. oleds yes yes and they've lost the black level a little bit and tcl's like i'll yeah. take it let's let's take it and they and they ran with it so they've become as you and i were at m wave last year uh the qm8 was there versus the a95k the g3 uh we did have a u7k there the uak did not make it it got lost in transit which ended up at, at my house which was great <laughs> <laughs> but the U7K held its own, even though it was way out of its price range. But it was amazing how, whether it was accurate or not, um, even against the G3 and the A95K, the eyes went to the QM8, and then they did look at the U7K like it belonged. The part I thought was interesting is then when you would tell them, this is where the value helps them. Oh, by the way, you can get an 85-inch version of this for less than that G3 at 65. And that's where I think dollars. Yeah, yeah and that's a thousand dollars for seventy-five inches. Like what? Yeah, and that's where the value comes back in and helps them. So I love what they're both doing. They're doing value, but that their identity is not value. Mm -hmm. But they're making it to where you feel like a fool if you buy a TV like the X90L, excellent TV, very low zone count, and a lot of our comparisons early in the year, people did not want the X90L too expensive. As the price dropped, people started to look at it. But for a while there, people were like, wait, I can get an 85-inch U7K, UAK, U6. Uh -huh. And the fact that they're covering that with sizes uh, is, I think, important. And I do think Hisense, they do have a different feel, right, FOMO? Hisense does have a more accurate, natural look, but it can look bright and saturated. So I love that about them. Yeah. They're trying to get a little closer to, as you mentioned, a little more natural, but they're both kind of brute forcing it too. And I love that because again, they're proud to be there. And they're on the right track. So by the way, if anyone's wondering, Hey, you know, questioning this decision to go big, definitely it is oh working my God. because yeah. right now, you know, one of my favorite TVs, the Samsung S90C 77 inch or the S89C 77 inch for those who go to Best Buy, similar, both QD OLED. The S89C is now under 2000, right? 1800, I think, at Best Buy. Don't know if that deals with it. For a 77 inch QD OLED. OLED by the way. QD, yeah, QD OLED, OLED, which many of us professional reviewers prefer and feel like this is the TV to get, even yeah. over the Sony A95L, because there's so much value there. And such yeah, it's so, good so gaming affordable. TV, right? It's gaming, yep. Yeah. And, and really, no thanks. Speaking. And <laughs> so it's out there, and I get viewers who said, you know, I took your advice. I still went with the 100 inch for $2,000, the high sense yeah. 76 n And yeah. that's what they said. They said, I came from a Vizio, five years old, and this TV looks so much better than the Vizio. I, I know the 77 inch yeah. looks even better, but this U76N, great, amazing. And off angle, I see it's washed out. It's okay, because my Vizio was even worse off angle. At the end of yeah. the day, I got a bigger TV that's better than my five-year-old Vizio. Now, yeah. the 77 inch S89C or S90C would also be better, but then he doesn't get that wow factor. When people visit his yeah. house, oh, yeah. wow, that's a huge TV. Okay, there's something to be said about that awe. That shock and awe is going to be there for the next three years. Soon everyone's going to have one. And then, wait, of course. it's only 85 inch. Now they expect you to have a 100 inch TV, right? Yeah. But if you get one, you get that shock and awe and you get to enjoy it with the people that visit your house, watch the Super Bowl or whatever you want. But the 77 inch, it's less shock and awe, more like, wow, that's a good looking TV. 
but the 100 inch is like, okay, what what can we watch? Yeah. Watch football. This yeah. is a little closer. And yeah, I think yeah, yeah. people are buying into that experience. They understand the image quality isn't there, but it's still better than their five year old TV. And that's something that QD OLED and OLED are like, oh my gosh, we never stopped to think about that. LCD TVs, yeah. image quality for the same size. No one will touch it, but for the same price, twice the size, we're in trouble. So what's funny that you mentioned that that's always been the case. When OLEDs first released, they were 55 inches. They were very dim. They were like plasma. But then you look at a, a brighter LCD and say, you're crazy. I mean, I'm going with this. Look at the pop. But then as the OLEDs became brighter and mm -hmm. they got into 77 inch, then the 77 inch was bigger than the 75. Mm -hmm. And the LEDs were still expensive. But I love about the 100 inch. They're going where OLEDs will almost never go. Mm -hmm. The LG uh, G2 now, I think, is 22,000 at 97, still under 100, 100 inches. Without um, MLA. Without MLA. Um, so I don't really see one of them being made for something affordable. So even if it does come out and it's 40 grand, we're talking about the normal people that are like, you know what? As nice as that probably is, this QMA or this UX, even five grand for a hundred inches is insane, but I just love the rivalry that I think is brewing. And I think it needs credit because as you mentioned that maybe Sony might be embarrassed or take offense. I don't think they do. I think these manufacturers see them coming and I don't think they have an answer to really compete. So what I think is also funny is they're fighting amongst themselves. You and I know they're already here. But this conversation is really to get the rest of the community to say, I don't look at them as being value per se. Yeah. Um, Cause we, and real quick, before we go into the next kind of topic of it, I did a Best Buy video recently and we were talking about the, and you and I always say this, the Q185, 90, 95. Then when we start hitting the seven and the six, we actually stop recommending them. Mm -hmm. And why do we do that? Because at that price point, now you're bumping into a flagship license and there's no comparison. And, and just for those we're clarifying, image processing, we don't mean 4K. We mean lower bitrate content. We mean streaming YouTube TV. And that's where motion, these both, right. yeah, motion. Both motion. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I mean, you know, QM8 has heavy motion, um, but they both are gamer centric. So they are heading in the right direction. I just think they're heading in a direction where the whole industry is staring into, where we all thought, honestly, a year and a half ago, LED was dead. Talk to me a little yes. bit about what you think about even the shift in the industry where now LED is becoming the hot thing because we basically killed it with G3, oh, QD yeah. OLED, and even seeing Samsung display, you're like, oh, this is the future. And then we're looking at these massive TVs. and But massive TVs of quality, FOMO, as you mentioned, bigger TV of quality will always be a higher-end TV that is smaller. This has been a shocker to the entire industry as far as observers, analysts. We were all predicting LCD TVs will be reserved for the lower end entry level $500. That's yep. it, right? Bargain. That means they will Bargain. not improve, right? They're there. We don't need to improve anything. Not a priority. Yet, not a priority. It's like, stop. Let's just freeze the development and focus on OLED, whether it's QD OLED, OLED, MLA, whatever it is. And so we've been looking at that direction as the future of premium TVs. But then last year saw a shift and the shift was so sudden, almost overnight, it that was overnight. analysts, I mean, the analysts were caught by surprise. Like I spoke to my friend at the SEC. He's yep. like, you know, we were predicting the growth of OLED. None of us predicted the flat line and decline of OLED decline. and the yeah. rise of premium mini LED at the same price now if they were selling more mini leds or lcd tvs at a lower price okay consumers are strapped for cash we get it no consumers are still spending that premium money just on a larger lcd tv so they're not saving money caught everyone by surprise everyone reassessed and so this year they're predicting now that oled market which is barely just hoping to keep market share while the mini led yeah. will continue to rise and get new buyers into that premium segment above $2,000, just at larger sizes. That's shaking predictions across the industry because this affects OLED's future. Unless OLED sells enough TVs, there's no money left to put into development to make it 
brighter and brighter. Now, I know it's brighter now, and, and they're hoping to win back the audience with brightness. And I think that's something that you and I will have to talk about at some point. Is brighter enough to win back consumers, or do they need to be larger? Should Ola just focus on getting larger? I mean, that's something that yeah. I don't know. I mean, I mean, the predictions have been off before. Well, and, and I and it kind of shows where we are even in the comments of this video when this goes live and premiere. And we love you guys for watching these uh, videos long. They're long discussions. We make them long on purpose. We love hanging out with you guys. But if you watch where the where the community talk was a few years ago, even the enthusiasm and, and where it was headed for the enthusiast was OLED, 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 QD OLED, MLA. They don't want to even look at a WRGB. And then it got to be where mini LED, come on, it's washed out. I don't like it. But it's so funny that they've aimed both TCL and Hisense, 5,000 nits for TCL, 10,000 nits for Hisense, where yeah. Samsung is looking at this AK AI upscaler that we love, but we think they're probably going to miss the boat on the brightness. Sony is steering the industry with a reference monitor at 4,000 nits, and even these two, these two hooligans are coming yeah, in. They're already there. <laughs> 10,000, you know? So and that's what I think is so great. They're actually swing they swung into it mm -hmm. and to your point um large ugly tvs are ugly but i think they've both shown especially high sense and tcl in the last couple of years we can do them with with, with great quality or, or good and, enough so let's talk yeah. about consumers the common joe at some point good enough is all you need now enthusiasts it's never good enough right like between you and me there's always something we could find oh in this scene if you pause it's not perfect yeah Yep. But the consumer is like, everything is perfect. Well, what are you talking about? Yeah. And high assistant TCL is like, okay, we're there. We are at good but enough. Yeah. Let's get bigger. Let's get cheaper. Let's yeah, add how, this feature. Uh, but, but FOMO, how about viewing angle? When everyone's like, how's the viewing angle? I'm like, it's 115 inches. Where are you going to sit in the backyard? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, where do you think the sweet spot is? And you know what's funny is I know we, we caught this in your video and part of my TCL video where it was viewing distance. And it was shocking, even though I think 77 is a good size, this is 83 behind me and it looks like a iPad because I'm mm -hmm. 20 feet away from it. Mm -hmm. But I think people are, like you said, they're coming from smaller TVs. They're like, hey, I don't think I need that. And then they, I, my point is I see them chasing the size and pretty good picture quality or really good picture quality. But I like that they're also going bright, immersive, vibrant, that way you get that um like back by back with the q9fn the hdr impact and oleds as beautiful as they are really just can't compete with all of those components they can't get larger than that i mean they have we only have an 83 inch mla this year uh, we're looking at probably six or seven thousand at launch we're Easy. guessing yeah. yeah um where you might be able to get 110 inch hisense for a little bit more than that that's really hard 20 something inches and then ten thousand nets yeah. And in a bright room, it's going to look amazing. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a great rivalry that we should start talking about. Where do you think as far as consumer opinion, what's really going to drive yeah. the opinion of both these brands to be able to shed this? Um, I call it brand uh, prejudice. It's a strong word. But for any of you guys watching that have been in home theater for many years, your favorite brands were all the crap brand at one time. They were so all the outlier. How long do you think it'll take for them to shed this? I think they've already shed it, shed it because when you and I go shopping, forget TVs, right? Shopping for stuff that we really don't don't know about very well. Like, you know, consumer, the average consumer shopping a TV is as lost as I am shopping for a microwave. Like, what, what are these microwave brands, right? Yeah, what so are the what watts? Do? <laughs> I, right. What do I do? I go to the star rating, right? The 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 reviews and I yep. look at the ones with maybe 800 people that bought it, a thousand people, whatever. Look at the average star reading. And I start reading the comments. I ignore all the ones about the retailer, you know, messing up on the delivery, right? Just about the quality of the actual product, the use and, and how they enjoy using the product. Both Hisense and TCL, the U7K, the Q7, average 4.6, 4.7 stars. That's so impressive to me. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, they're there because normally I'd say three, four years ago, that'd be like a 4.2, 4.3. Yeah. Yeah, now yeah. they move their way up because consumers who don't go to YouTube to watch reviews, they just look at the stars. Wow. Yep. It's big. It's inexpensive. 4.6 stars. Good enough for me.
it's not good enough. How? I mean, do they want five stars? Yeah, get a Sony. Yeah, twice as much, five stars, and then they read the reviews. You know what? I'll just take the high sense with four point six stars. But you know what's funny? That. Stay right there because I think it's there for this reason too, FOMO. When you have to, when you're Samsung, Sony, especially Sony and LG, when you start hearing how do they justify the price, we didn't hear that much a few years ago. Now you're hearing more like the a 95 l How are you justifying that? Well, I think having these guys chilling in the room with, you know, like I said, you and I've joked about checking discrete audio while the guy with the sound bar has watched his fifth movie. And I'm like, hey, is this amp working? <laughs> and even they're hanging out with watching 100 inch TV and popcorn. Atmos. Hello. <laughs> I'm trying to see if my Atmos is working. Um, I think that is more people sit down, enjoy your content. Um, I love where they're both going with gaming. They're both equal in that regard. 144 hertz. They're looking to bring all that. Um, but I just think that they've created enough of an impact to now question the big three and say, okay, well, how am I going to just like to your point, the S90, what a great value. Yeah, but it's not really that big. You're like, wait, you're coming from a 42 inch, you know? And I just think that the quality, the size, they're coming from all different positions. They also have, you know, they have their own micro LEDs. They have their prototypes. I just think I'm very excited for what they're both going to do this year. I covered a lot of the Hisense line last year. You covered the Hisense and the TCL line. I had my hands on with the Q7 and the QM8. And even their surround sound offerings and sound bars are becoming much better if they can get that ecosystem yeah. thing working especially the ux with the great sound but i just love that they're both headed in the same direction in different ways but i think that people will start to your point i think the reason heavy these heavyweight division tvs are more accepted is the quality is good enough good enough yeah yeah where you could have said hey i think the qn90a samsung flagship was 22 or twenty three thousand when it came out at 100 inches and that, yeah. if you remember, that was a year before. So it, the Q90B was out, and we're like, hey, we have a 100-inch Q90A. You're like, but that's, isn't that last year's? And then Sony had the X92 that was its own model. Then the X90, and everyone said, well, why would I want a 100-inch version of your lowest end? And then here's Hisense. Oh, I have the UAK. Yeah, it's $2,000. It costs cost as much as my phone. <laughs> no, okay. You know, let's let's talk about that jump. They went from 100 inch to 110 inch. They went from under 2,000 to 10,000. This yeah. is not an incremental upgrade, people. I yeah. mean, we're so used to TVs slightly larger, slightly brighter. Both high sense TCL, like TCL 115 inch, 5,000 nits. Yeah, it, it's like these leaps where they're not holding back. I've heard from many people say that LG has been holding back its OLED. Because it was so good, they didn't have to improve. They, they sat on MLA it. for years, yeah. and now it's too late. They should have unleashed it when they had a chance. Now, yeah. no matter what you unleash, you're playing catch-up. You had the lead. You could have pulled away with that. Can you imagine QD OLED if MLA was introduced the year before QD OLED was released? And then when QD OLED is released, you have MLA Part 2. And then yeah. when QD OLED third gen is released, you have MLA that goes to 4,000 nits. They sat on all of that. And yeah, yeah. Well, it, really, you can't go back in time. It's well, really, well, really good point too. You know, we'll wrap it up soon, but even next year's X95, maybe M prototype, the TV we're super excited about, we know it's going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. And I can already see us saying this local dimming is this, the TV is that. And I can already see our community going, hey, but how big is it? Well, it's 85. Ooh, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Oh yeah. Was 85 for what? Seven grand? I can get. And then you start doing that math. I can get a 110 UX <laughs> 110. for nine grand. 10,000 nits. I don't need a sound bar. Oh, by the way, they do have, you know, more Heisen sound equipment now. Yeah. So I think they're ahead of the curve. And to your point, I think Samsung is going to play catch up because their Q95, well, well, both Sony and Samsung, they took themselves out of it, FOMO. The X90 was the only TV that could fight the Hisense TVs because it was the only one in that price range. Um, Samsung's QN85, great TVs, but they're kind of regulated to the Best Buy section and the BJ's and Costco. They're not really pumping that up, but that's all they have to fight three TVs from each one. And they so have their is, flagships. This is why Samsung specifically is focusing. If you, you know, remember, if you remember that first look demo on um, processing, room, processing, but it's part of your entire life. What you said, I've Double got my house. Samsung phone. 
You walk yep. in, boom, it goes yep. straight to the TV. You walk away from the TV, boom, it goes to your tab and your Galaxy this and that. Samsung's ecosystem and their operating system, Tizen, everything works more seamlessly than any other brand out there with the exception yep. of Apple. But then Apple's ecosystem is limited to phone, the Apple TV box. Your watch. Speakers, that's your it. watch, yep. that's it. Samsung, everything. Appliances yep. and tables and picture yep. frames now. Everything is connected so that you have a house that's seamlessly connected however you want, whether it's music, audio, video. That's what Samsung's looking at because look at the other stuff they have. They have, other than the frame, they have the Ciro. They have these TVs that are all lifestyle or the freestyle. They want you to have this life that is high-end living mm -hmm. and it's all connected. You're buying into that family of products. They're learning yep. from Apple, right? So I think that's how they're going to separate themselves. They're like, look, we're going to copy Hisense TCL. Our image quality is good enough. We're not yeah. going to waste another dime pushing the envelope of image quality on our QLEDs or, or yeah. Neo QLEDs. Which they're, they're clearly, not, which they're clearly not doing because their processor from the AK lineup is not going there. So I guess here's what, here I'm illustrating my point. Samsung's QLED lineup to me is very much going to be the same. They don't have the new processor. Even the QD OLEDs aren't going to have the new processor. You'll have the more matte finish, which the anti-reflective looks great. It maybe, maybe not. That's going to be on the QD OLED. But they're they're letting their Neo QLEDs just sit out there. And the Samsung... The 4K, yeah. The 4K. Now the Samsung 900D, which will have the AI upscaler, I can already hear us talking about that TV because I think it's going to be awesome. I know somebody in the comments is going to raise their hand and go, well, how many nits is that? Uh, it's 2,500. It's going to, that's going to be what? That's it. So to your point, that whole lifestyle thing either sounds great to you or it sounds arduous to you. Yeah. And if yeah. you're just looking for a TV, you're like, I don't want to give you my email. I don't want to connect this thing. I don't want to connect my headphones. I want, and then here's TCL and Heist. And it's like, oh, you know what I have for you? I got these. Because they're mm -hmm. focused on TVs. Yes. Yeah. And that's where the other companies, I think, and even Sony, as much as you love what they're doing, they simplified their lineup last year. X93, X95, one size, mm -hmm. uh, no 55-inch TV except for the X90L. Mm -hmm. So they already, you know, no mossed it and said, uh, you know, go with these other guys. And we did. I, and I see where Sony's going. So, so every, so their identity is becoming more clear. Sony is like, look, we are for the cinema purists, right? Yep. If you love movies, any of our TVs will deliver that end-to-end -end consistency, meaning end-to-end. -end. We start with a Sony camera, a Venice, a Burano, whatever it is, or the FX3, and then yep. we go to production, Sony's mastering monitor, right? Post-production, grading. Every leg, and then every with leg that, it. you go straight to the TV. End-to-end. -end. You're part of the cinema family when you buy a Sony TV. If you love movies, you're paying a little bit more because you have this ecosystem from production to post-production to you, the consumer. Get into it. So if you have a Sony camera, you're going to get a Sony TV. I mean, it's it's that consistency end to end. And they have a you know Sony AVR, the new one that was just released last year. So mm -hmm. Sony has a niche, and they're just going to focus on that niche. They they don't want to be a TCL. They played that game. They lost. They don't want to be in high sense. They don't want to be a Samsung. They don't have an ecosystem. Very niche cinema purist. And they're okay with that. I, I see it. They're, they're embracing it. They're not going to try to be anything other than what they are at its core. And I think that's great. But you know what you just did? You just labeled all three of the big three as niche and heading their own little thing. Think about what you're saying for a minute. They're all heading in their own small corners, though they're the leaders. LG has the, I think the G4 probably the best TV of the year. That thing's going to come out and they're like everything in the QNET's coming out, which I think will be great. It's going to be hard to compete with these other TVs. Yeah. yeah. Then you look at TCL and Hisense who are like, actually, no, I'm in the TV business. That's what I do. And I think that's crazy. But what people don't know, and, and they might know, and we'll finish off with this. It's getting late. Um, CES, right away you saw their commitment. I believe, you know, obviously the NFL for TCL. And I think the NBA for Hisense. Yes. So they right. spent that money. Boom. Mm -hmm. The booths right off the bat, massive. Not other than TCL having the waterfall, which was cool. It was really about their real products. 
Um, Hisense did show a couple 75 inch UXs that are going to be in Europe alone. I think I wish they were coming here because they were very super thin. thin. Yep. That was super the thin. thin. Um, so hopefully, and you know, that's the kind of influence a lot of these videos have. We show there's a demand for that. They may bring something like that over, but it was all business. The U8N, U7N, um, also not just incremental upgrades, but actually I shouldn't say they're not incremental upgrades. They are just taking what's good already and just making it better. So they're actually following, they're all following the old way of LEDs, more nits, more zones. And I love this about them. Samsung stopped doing that. Sony stopped doing that. Both Hisense and TCL are like, oh, we'll do it. We'll give you more nits. We'll give you more zones. So in finishing up home, I think also, you know, speak a little bit to me real quick about the fact that the misconception that they're trying to break in when price wise or sales wise, they're both actually killing it. Aren't they? they? Are. Yeah, they are. They, and they have deep pockets, don't they? They're deep pockets, two of the largest electronics companies in China, and they're trying to understand U.S. tastes. And so they've already dominated the inexpensive TVs, like for under $500 TCL. That's every single time. No other TV offers as good of an image quality for $500 or below and lasts as long. So TCL has nailed the value area. Now they're moving up to, well, they moved up to medium mid-tier last year and this year. They're hitting the high end because if you have ten thousand dollars, they have a TV for you. If you yep. have twenty thousand, they have a TV at five thousand. Right? They're trying to hit every strata of your budget, and high sense is the same. You got ten grand, probably the UX one hundred and ten. Right? That's my guess where it's going to be. They have a TV for your budget, and that was unheard of years ago. So I think they're there. You would not commit that much money to developing a high end TV unless you think you could sell it. And they've been testing that water every year, right? And Absolutely. last year, when they sold out the UX, they go, okay, we have the market. Let's hit yeah. it hard this year. I, I, I think it's, and, and I think them covering all the bases and the fact that the misconception that they don't make any money and they need the money because they have deeper pockets in terms of marketing and feature set. Foma, I'm going to let you go, but how excited are you for this rivalry this year? I'm, well, what have we been doing? Q8 versus U8K. This year, the year before, every year, that is the rivalry that a lot of people have been looking forward to. LG versus Samsung versus Sony, hey, those are great, but I'm seeing a rising interest in Hisense versus TCL. Last year, Q8 versus U8K, Q7 versus U7K, one of my best videos. Seriously. Yep, and, yep, I, me it too. It gets a lot of views. Right? You too. I mean, yeah, that's me it. Too. You guys are talking. If you watch it, that means they're there. This yeah. year, better than ever. I think it'll be very popular us comparing Q7 versus Q7 versus the U7N, QM8 versus the U8N, the UX versus the Beast 115 inch from high or TCL. And hopefully we can bring it to M Wave, one of those TVs at M Wave. Hoping. Absolutely. Hoping. Fingers crossed. And that and for me in closing, it's really I love it. The more competition, the better. I'm a mini LED fan. But when it comes to getting your money's worth, that's great for everyone, but also having more competitors in the field oh. is making everybody else not be complacent. You can already see the last couple of years where every company was kind of chilling a little bit, whether it was OLED, less innovation. These companies are going to push the needle and make the need for more innovation. FOMO, my man, thank you so much for being here today. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We love you guys. Check out FOMO's channel. Uh, thanks for popping in, brother. We'll talk to you. Anytime. See you later. Better. It's better to burn out than to fade away. Where can be your new